Young entrepreneurs sell tech startup for millions. New tech company will change the way we buy groceries. Tech startup with almost no assets valued at 1.2 billion. Wow. So it seems like I'm hearing about these kinds of stories more and more. And it's very common these days to hear about these young tech startups that happen to sell their company for millions, if not billions of dollars, if the bidder is right. And this started to get me thinking, are we in the golden age of software development right now? Is this going to be the period of time where, you know, we look back to right now and say, this was the time where you could have made it big if you just had an idea and had the determination to build something that people wanted. And so I was thinking about this a lot and it brought me back to an interesting video I watched by Mark Zuckerberg in 2005. And he was doing a guest lecture at Harvard University for like an introduction to computer science course. And in that video, and I'll link to it in the top over here, and in that video, he mentions a lot about how this was back in 2005, that engineers and developers have such high leverage in the sense that you can pull together just a very small group of people, maybe like two or three different software developers who know what they're doing, and build out a product that can be deployed and reach hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. And if you contrast this with what this was like, maybe just like 20 or 10 years ago, maybe 20 years ago, it took a lot more effort to build out a product, right? I mean, to build a service that does something, you needed developers, you needed security engineers, you needed product managers, you needed all these different types of people to all come together and work together to build something. Whereas now, if you just have an idea, you can do the same thing. And I think a lot of this is due to the fact that there's so many different tools out there and infrastructure that exists where a person doesn't need to know or doesn't need to build their own data center to actually achieve the same level of scale that in the past a company would have. So if you think about it, right, like back then, in order to reach all around the world and have good performance in a service product, you'd have to have data centers all across the world or you have to contract that out to other people that had infrastructure there, host your application there, set up all this stuff and how you were gonna manage your deployments and cross regional zones and everything. And it was probably a nightmare. Like I'm too young to know what that looked like. So maybe Maybe someone can correct me. But just thinking about how that looks like now with tools like AWS, like Azure, like Google Cloud, all these cloud-based providers, it's so, so easy these days to just build something out and deploy it all over the world. And if you think about this from an economic perspective, a key point of any business is your capacity to scale, right? Ideally, you want it to be easy to scale. You want it to be easy for your product or service to reach more people without any kind of physical barrier or any kind of barrier, right? With the way that the internet works these days, everyone has you know, a smartphone, a tablet, a computer. Everyone or pretty much everyone has access to the internet. And the internet is the ultimate vehicle for scale, right? Like you can just deploy something and with the tools that exist now, it's easier than ever to reach millions of people. And this made me think like, is this the time where we're gonna look back on in 10 or 15 years when we're a little bit older and say like, yeah, this was the golden age of computing. Uh, so I think there's like a lot of uh, factors that kind of are tied into why I think this is true. And you know, I already talked about scale of the internet and how it can reach hundreds of millions if not billions of people very easily with no real product. And so I think this time is very, very interesting. I mean, there's a lot of examples that you can think of, like very easy examples, like companies like Airbnb. Airbnb doesn't actually own anything, right? I mean, they own real estate now because they have offices and everything, but what do they own in terms of, you know, the people that are providing the service? People own their houses and they're just using Airbnb as a platform. You think about Uber, Uber doesn't have any assets. All the vehicles are owned by the people, right? They're just charging a fee on top of that. You think about a company like, like WeWork, they just hold leases for, for buildings and just rent them out from people that already own them and then rent them out to you and me and they take a fee on top of that. So it's, it's so easy or it seems so easy to come up with an idea and just scale this out. And for many reasons, the barrier to entry is very, very low and the opportunity to reach a large number of people is very, very high through the internet and through all these different cloud infrastructure providers that exist right now. Uh, so I think it goes beyond scale and like the fact that you can build out something without having any other assets. I think speed of development is an important thing here. Um, and this ties directly into the tools that we have available now that we didn't have available, you know, just 
15, 20 years ago. If you think about like what developers have to go through, and I, I even remember this, when I was learning like introduction to computer science, I had to learn Java and and I had to look up in the Java documentation, like the original Java documentation, looking at like the, the java.util.string class to try and find a method that I was trying to use to do something. Whereas today, if I were trying to do the same thing, it's like one Google search away or one Stack Overflow query away. It's so easy to directly get the information that you want. And because of that, you can build things so much faster. Now, I'm not saying that this is great because often what happens is that you get spaghetti code that people just copy from the internet and paste into their application. And I've seen problems of this approach, but it just shows you like, if you're just trying to unblock yourself and you have an idea and you just want to get it out the door quickly, and it's so easy to do that now. There's so many different resources that exist. And more on top of this, like in terms of finding information, is the tools that we have access to us, to us today. And you know, Google is one tool, Stack Overflow is another tool. But what about like the IDEs that we use and the debugging tools? And if you think about the wide variety of different editors and IDEs that we have accessible to us today, it's much, much easier to build something in an IDE than it was back way back when, when you know you only had access to a text editor and you were debugging using system out print lines and just printing something to the shell just to, to try and figure out where your program is going wrong. Now you have IDEs that can you can drop a debugger in there and figure things out so quickly. Then we have access to things like continuous integration continuous deployment, automated deployments with integration tests constantly running on every build and every deployment. It just like blows your mind the level of automation that we have to rapidly deliver products in an effective way. And another supporting point of this being kind of the golden age of computing is if you look at the job prospects, right? Like a lot, a lot, a lot of big companies that are paying really, really well are hiring talented software developers. And this is because they recognize that a single small group of developers can build and maintain something that can kind of feed into a product that supports hundreds of thousands, if not millions of users. If you contrast that with another profession, you know, equally high value, maybe something like a doctor, um, like a general practitioner can only, you know, serve one person at a time. You're limited by the physical world. Whereas us, we can build something that, you know, we don't never have to talk to anyone really. We can just write our code and build something out and have a product out there. The, the leverage that we have access to is much much, much higher as a software developer compared to something more traditional like a doctor or like maybe like a, um, a hardware engineer or something like that where you have very very little opportunity to scale yourself so I think that's another factor like there's so many job prospects that are out there and I think the market is starting to realize that with a relatively low investment for some good software developers you can build products that reach all these people um, so like I, I truly do think that the world we're living in now is like the golden age of computing and we're gonna look back on this 10 20 years and be like why didn't I start this this company or why didn't I I release this product that has this idea um, this is just something that I've been thinking about lately uh, let me know your thoughts down below if you like this video don't forget to like and subscribe thanks so much guys I'll see you next time